practice his deeds. But I'm not going to leave this person. My maqsid, my mission, says shaitan, is that when this man or woman is leaving the world, I'm going to make sure at the time of death, he has no iman or she has no iman. That's his mission. That's the point. Listen carefully. Very important point. At that time, he tries his best. And obvious when a person is departing from the world, he's ill or there's a severe condition that's befallen that person or person's in hospital lying down or he's passing through difficulty or pain and split second, uh, maybe he's in despair or problematic situation. At that time, shaitan, he thinks, ah, this is his weak time, the time where this person's weak, physically, maybe spiritually. At that time, then shaitan attacks to grab and steal the iman. What happens then? Allahu Akbar, Allah save us. That shaitan, he attacks and he tries his best to remove the iman from a person's heart so that we depart from the world without belief. And he wants to be successful in this. And so many people lose iman at that time in the final moments of life at the time of death. And they lose their iman. They lose the iman. They lose that fight with shaitan. And this is the meaning of this hadith. This is the meaning of the hadith. What does shaitan do? Ayyat is shaitan. Totally is like with the lightness of wind. He takes away our understanding and iman. And when he makes a person not think, what does he make take our understanding away from? From what? Those people's minds are blown away who never listened to this hadith, who never read this hadith, never understood this hadith, doesn't know about this hadith, don't think about the hadith, have no concern about the hadith. If I say today that it's going to rain very heavy and our, our roofs are weak and we won't sleep all night long because the ceiling may cave in, the water may cave down, may fall down and we feel bad because it's ra- raining heavily. Or for example, if you realize something's about to occur and you got a lot of worry, or if this happens, we're going to suffer a loss in a Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said there's going to be a time that's going to come to you, death. There's no guarantee when it's going to come. You don't know when it's going to come. And those people will fail at the time of death who did not prepare for that time. And how do we then oppose shaitan at the time of death? How do we oppose the devil at the time of death? How do we oppose Satan at the time of death? Those who understand this hadith, uh, there's another subject of another hadith, same way. Same way. That at the time of mouth, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, Allahu Akbar, that that time, the human being, for him, the time of death to recite the kalima or to leave the world in the state of iman is a big test. It's not easy. Today we say we'll recite the, the kalima, but shaitan will be there. Yeah? And we say, Ya Allah, that time that will come when we will die, that we need the requirement, we, we will be desperate need to recite the kalima. Will this happen? Allah will be to recite. So there are two things. This is the time. Who will be successful at the time of death? Which people will pass the test? Who will recite the kalima and the statement of iman? Those who after hearing these hadith, they understood that we need to prepare for the death. And which people? What? What? Allah Ta'ala says, you do my shukr, you, you are grateful to me, and I will azidannakum. Allah says, I will increase the nemas. If Allah says, if you don't do my shukr, then don't worry, I'll keep it the same level. Or if Allah Ta'ala says, that if you don't do my shukr, I will reduce the gift. So for example, Allah Ta'ala says, what does Allah Ta'ala say? Even if Allah Ta'ala said, I will keep it static, the amount of treasures and woods are going to, or I will increase it. But Allah says, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah says, all three things come. I will increase it, you won't get any loss, and I won't keep it at the same level. I will increase the, the gifts and the treasure to you in this verse of the Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala has made three things clear to the human beings. Your eyes, we should be grateful for the eyes. Na'mas upon na'mas. Every na'ma Allah says, whichever na'ma you do sugar for, it will increase, it will increase, it will increase. It will not end, it will not finish. You will not get no loss and I won't take it back from you, Allah says. So what do we have to do? All we have to do is shakartum, shakartum, shukr Allah, grateful to Allah, grateful to Allah. We never think. Then he has got the greatest gift in the universe. And I says, if you are grateful to me, and I will increase your uh, gift I've given to you. So Allah says, if you do shukr of your iman, then I will increase your iman. So those people who are grateful for their belief, Allah says in the Quran, if you glorify me, praise me, do my dhikr, Allah, I'm grateful to you. You give me iman, you give me belief. And they're awake and conscious. And consciously they're doing wird. They're reciting and grateful for the iman. Then the iman is increased and strengthened and improved until death. The iman is so strong that shaitan, cannot even come near to them. Near to them. How will he steal the iman? So what a great solution method. This is the way to get husna khatama, the best death. The Quran has given us the solution. You have time now. And you may die in difficulty without iman. But it's so easy to strengthen iman that if you are existent in the life with iman strong, you will see the reward in the hereafter and the, this dunya at the same time parallel. Such an easy method. Look at this. What is this? So here, now we come to this point for eating, drinking, wearing, 
clothing. Now let's come. Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'll give you such a point here, such a method that you'll get food, you'll get drink, increase in your food, increase in your drinking, increase in your health. وَجَعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Subhanallah, Allah, we are eating and drinking. Then here, what link has this got to do with Iman and Islam? For this reason, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. So we don't forget, after eating, when you do this du'a, the more you do this du'a, وَجَعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Then we are doing shukr for our Iman. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That we are being grateful for Iman, and our Iman is increasing and strengthening and improving. Do you understand how great is this du'a? So such and a cure for the ummah, that even if we don't ask dua regularly or do things, but if we do amal on the sunnah of Rasulullah that after eating we recite the dua, then that person, he will get so many things, food, drink, and on top of that, the asal genuine thing, the ability to uh, ward off shaitan, so he cannot uh, consume and take our iman and the kalim at the time of death. So we should recite, وَجَعْلَنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And Allah, we're grateful to you that you've given us iman, belief in our hearts. Otherwise, this is no link, is there? Food and drink with iman. But Allah's Nabi Sallallahu has joined the two. And when you're eating and drinking after that, you will get the food, you get more to drink, more energy and resources, and inside that you will be preparing for your akhirah, for your hereafter. So all of us should remember this, everyone remembers this, but nobody recites this.